What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Austin Hole Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music. And today we are back with another tutorial. And we're actually featuring our good friend Christopher CU today. If you haven't seen him before, we've had him on our channel. He actually teaches piano in theory. And so we really, really like having him on here to break down modern songs, show you all about song structures, chord progressions, all of that really, really good stuff that's not my forte. If you like these videos and you like the ones we've done of him in the past, we actually just launched a brand new course. It's the Music Theory Fundamentals course. It's a 17 part series that teaches you all the basics and some intermediate immediate stuff behind music theory, uh, constructing chord progressions, song breakdowns of popular songs. It's super, super, super essential if you're trying to get the basis of music theory. I've actually been taking private lessons with Chris lately and it's really, really helping my production. So I highly recommend it as somebody who is just totally non-biased. Definitely go check out the course. We are still running a special right now where if you get the course over the next few days, you'll also get our pop progressions MIDI pack, which is normally 40 bucks. The course with the MIDI pack is going to be $70 and the course without the MIDI pack after this next weekend is still going to be $70. So definitely go get it while you can get a $40 pack for free and you can actually use that with your new theory knowledge. But without further ado, let's actually hop into the video that Chris is here to give you. And if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and go check out his channel, which we will have in our description. Hey everybody, Chris here back with Make Pop Music. I hope you're having an awesome day today. And in this video, I wanted to talk about something really exciting and that is how to write the perfect pop progression. And so I'm gonna be covering a few songs here today, as you can see here. Um, these are some of the percussions that, you know, people are using, you know, the biggest uh, hits in the world and uh, we'll show you what makes them so effective. And I wanted to choose three that are kind of contrasting in the chord progressions that are being used. You know, the number of chords and how they relate to each other and all that. So uh, let's just dive right into it and talk about some of these principles here. So you can see here at the very top, I've written down simplicity is key. And I've uh, written these in caps because this is super important. Um, you know, a lot of the times we're trying to make ourselves unique and have these progressions that stand out from the, from the rest of the pack. And, you know, you really don't need to do that. As long as you keep it nice and simple, um, that's going to give you more of a likelihood to actually having your music um, more appealing to the general public. So the first point here I've written is that the major or the minor scale is kind of the safest bet. And what I mean by that is when you're kind of choosing the tonality of your song, if you're going for maybe an uplifting or, you know, happy, vibey song, then you might want to stick with a major scale. And if you're going for something more moody and maybe more laid back, uh, even more sad and wistful, then you might want to stick with a minor key or, you know, and use the minor scale. Um, another thing that, uh, that I actually didn't write down here, but I just thought of right now is that uh, the, the, the keys with less sharps and flats tend to be a little more appealing as well to the human ear. I feel like a lot of the childhood tracks that we hear, the childhood songs, um, the things we hear when we're younger, they tend to be more on the neutral uh, musical scale. So there's like less sharps um, and less flats that we tend to hear. I think that kind of contributes to the amount of more simple keys that we hear on the radio today. So for example, there's more songs that will tend to be like C major or D major um, compared to like C sharp minor or, um, you know, F sharp major or B flat minor or something like that. So those are, I consider more colorful keys and they actually do have a different sound to them uh, compared to the more neutral keys or the ones with less sharps and flats in them. Now, the second point I've written down here is to use the tonic chord on beats one and three. So tonic chord is essentially the one chord or the chord that's built on the first degree of the scale. So for example, if we have the C major scale, then the tonic is the first note of that scale. So for example, if we have a, a pop progression, you're more likely to see something like one, six, four, five, than six, one, four, five. So the, the, uh, the one chord, which is kind of the home chord, you can call it, it's more likely to be on the first position or the third position. Because in, uh, when, when, basically when we have a progression that has four chords in it, the first and the third uh, beats or the first and third positions are considered to be the stronger beats. So beats two and four are considered weaker. So like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know? So that's kind of like straight feel. Um, so having the tonic chord on either one and three gives you more of that solidified feeling. So I'll show you an example. This is one, six, four, five. Versus if I did it the opposite way, where I did like six, one, four, five, listen to this one, what this sounds like. So 
you see what I mean? So this in the second time, there was a bit of ambiguity before I hit the one chord. So it's like, what's gonna happen? Ah, there's the one. Then I go to four, then to five, you know? Versus if you start with the one right away, then you hit the listener with like, okay, I'm definitely in this key. You know, this is the C major, um, one, six. Now you can depart from it and do your other stuff. Okay? So that's something else you can consider. Um, you know, considering that most chord progressions are four chords long, uh, you know, consider having that beat one and beat three be your one chord. Uh, now this is more of a guideline. Like all of these are guidelines. So none of them are, you know, hard rules. But um, if you want to play around with it, feel free to try it on two and four. It's just less commonly used in, um, in mainstream pop music. And then... Uh, here I've written down five to one and four to one is very common in a chord progression. So when you do have one, uh, the one chord, the tonic chord, preceding it with the five chord or the four chord is very common. So what do I mean by that? For example, let's say we had a chord progression one, uh, one, five, six, four. Okay. One, five, six, four. And then we go back to one. So having this four to one movement, or even having a five to one movement, is super super strong. And in in like classical music, we we call these cadences. When you go from five to one or four to one, these are very strong cadences. Um, it, it's basically like the end of a musical sentence. So it's almost like a period in a regular sentence. Like it puts a cap on it. So when you have you know one, five, six, four. To feel complete, you have to go back to one. And this is called a plagal cadence. So just making sure that you, you have this five to one or four to one movement keeps the progression kind of fresh and keeps it looping. And that's that segues into this point right here. The progression must be loopable. So whatever chord you have, that's the last one in the progression, just play around with it and see if it goes back to the to the first chord smoothly. Let me just make a random progression. Let's say we had um Six, four, one, five, right? So let's see. Six, four, one, five. Now, if I go back to the first chord, the six, will it sound smooth? Let's find out. Let me play the progression one more time. So what was it? Six, four, one, five. So what do you think? Well, to me, that does sound pretty good. It sounds like it seamlessly loops back to the beginning. And this is what we call a deceptive cadence when you go from the five to the six. Um, so, you know, ha having a loopable progression allows the music to continue to flow without the listener being like, why does it sound so awkward at that moment? Every four chords, um, you know, there's, a, there's an awkward sound to it. And that's most likely because you have something that's, um, you know, a chord that doesn't necessarily fit well going back to the first chord of the progression. So these are kind of the four things that I wanted you to keep in mind. Um, just choosing a basic major and minor scale and basing your whole song off of that. Don't be overcomplicated. There's no need to do that. Um, the, the the biggest hits, you know, stick to the basics. That's really it. It's it's fundamentals. Uh, use the tonic chord on beat one or one or three. Some songs actually use the tonic chord more than once in a progression, but um, you know, in general, try not to do that. You just, you can have, you know, four different chords that flow well together. Um, and then I've, I said here five, five to one or four to one, these cadences are very common. So using those will help it continue to flow smoothly. And then, yeah, just make sure the progression is loopable. So they should be in an order where the chords feel like they go um, nicely together and they can continue to loop. So let's move on to these case studies here. So um, I've chosen three songs and I wanted to discuss it from the most complicated to the simplest. Um, and actually, you see the most complicated one, this Jonas Brothers song, The Sucker. Um, <laughs> it has one, two, three, four, five, six, really, really six chords because this one here, there's two of the same ones. Um, and, but actually, it's actually quite simple. So the song itself is in C sharp minor. 
okay? And this is the chorus progression. This is the chord progression that happens in the chorus, okay? So it goes like this. C sharp minor, F sharp minor, B major, E major, A major, G sharp major. So let's talk about this. C sharp minor, right away, we get the one chord in the first position. So it establishes that you know, we're in C sharp minor, it hits us with the home feeling right away. Then we leave the tonic feeling or the one feeling, we go to F sharp minor, which is four. So this is pretty common going from one to four in a major key or a minor key is very standard. Now it's, it's great because now he turns this F sharp minor into the two chord of E major. So now he's pulling a two, five, one um, in the key of E major. So so you could you know step back even further and say okay this c sharp minor is actually the two chord or sorry the six chord in e major so it's almost like he's doing a six two five one you could interpret it that way in e major but the way i see it is that he's establishing the c sharp minor as the one chord in the chorus because that's the key of the song then the F sharp minor is used as the pivot chord. So it, while the F sharp minor is the fourth chord in C sharp minor, it's also the two chord in E major. And um, the E major happens to be the relative major of C sharp minor, which means that they share the same number of sharps or flats in their scale. Okay, so it sounds very seamless because you go from this C sharp minor to this two five one in E major, and sounds super resolved because B to E is a five to one in E major. Then it goes to A major, which is the four chord in um, four chord in a, E major, but it's the six chord in uh, six chord in C sharp minor, which then goes to the five chord of C sharp minor. So now we're firmly back in C sharp minor. Okay. So uh, I just made a note here. Point number three, that's staying on the sixth chord for two beats right here, the A major chord adds anticipation and suspense. So it's like, what's gonna happen? Oh, it keeps us on our toes again. And then now when we get this cadence, this G sharp major, it's like, okay, now we're pretty sure that we're gonna go back to C sharp minor because G sharp major is the five chord in C sharp minor. And that is what happens. We actually go back to the one chord. So going from five to one, like we mentioned before, five to one is super common because it's it's a perfect cadence and it's the strongest resolution you can actually have in music. So I'm gonna play it one more time and just see what this sounds like. Right, and then it, it goes again. So hope that makes sense. You can actually break it up into these little sections here. So this is like a six, two, five, one in E major. Then uh, it goes back to C sharp minor through the use of this A major to G sharp major, delivers us back to C sharp minor, and then the progression just repeats. So it's it's actually pretty clever. Um, adding this E major here has a little bit of a, uh, you know, it adds a touch of happiness like I wrote here. Cool. All right, and uh, and just the, the last point here, having the major five chord in C sharp minor makes the resolution back to the one very strong because usually in the key of C sharp minor, we would have G sharp minor. That would be the fifth chord. So, but having this major five chord instead makes this raised note want to go back up to the tonic. So this raised note is called the leading note, the seventh note of the C sharp minor scale. It goes back up and then we're resolved, okay? Now let's move on to the next progression. So, or the next song I should say, uh, which is I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber. And this progression is pretty much the most common progression, that, like one of the most common that's ever made or that's been used. So this one is in F sharp major, the, the key of the song. And it goes like this. So this ticks all the classical music boxes. You know, you go from one, you establish that home key, um, going to six, adds a tinge of sadness, which is really nice. Going to four, um, it makes it happy again, you know? And then four going to five is called an imperfect cadence. 
it's uh, asks it asks a question. So actually, if I played this progression once and stopped, it will sound very incomplete. So. You know, it's like, I want to go back to one. So that's why this progression is so repeatable because the five wants to go back to the one and it does a few times. So five, one. Okay. And um, I also made a note here that F sharp major is very colorful because the, the key of F sharp major actually has six sharps in it. And uh, that's that's a very colorful key, not as a not as common of a of a key in uh, mainstream pop music. So I, I feel like Ed Sheeran loves these more colorful keys. Like he tends to be more um, adventurous with them. You know, he he likes sharp keys a lot actually. Uh, some flat keys as well, but like I'm thinking, Photograph is E major, um, Castle on the Hill is D major, uh, Shape of You is C sharp minor. So. He uses a lot of sharp keys, really, really colorful ones, right? And then finally, you need to calm down by Taylor Swift. Uh, this one is pretty, like, as simple as you can really get here. This is in a, the key of D major, but it's really just, and, and a lot of it is just determined by the bass line, especially in the verses. In the chorus, it goes like, da, 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 or whatever, and that's just outlaying a D major chord. Da, 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 da. If you listen to that, that's actually just a D major chord. Super simple. But anyway, the, the harmony is just going one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Back down to the four, which is G major. Out back up to D major. Down to D ma uh, G major. And I think it, this repeats for the entire song. So if you think you need to be complicated, look at what she's doing. If you think of the song, look at what you made me do. That one, uh, the most like complicated it gets is probably in the pre-chorus because it goes like. So all she's doing in the pre-chorus is she's going from one. And then I think she's going to, she's going to, I think the five chord, but the bass is just descending by step. And then it goes to the six chord and then it goes to the five chord. So it's descending by step. And then it makes it very easy for the five to go back up to the one in the chorus. Um, so yeah, I mean, her songwriters and uh, her team have really mastered the art of just simple writing, but uh, delivered in a very powerful way. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I like if you followed some of these guidelines, I think it'll give you a really good step in the right direction for writing some uh, really effective chord progressions. And um, I hope all of this makes sense. Just let me know if uh, if it if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Um, and yeah, as you can see, like this chord progression here, the sucker one, it's it, you know it's more chords than the typical mainstream pop progression, but all of the chords do make sense in what they're trying to do. And they're, they're just really keeping in mind that they're going back, you know, back to the one chord through the use of the five chord, which really makes sense. Because all they really need to do is go from one, five, one, five, but they decided to do, you know, like a one, four, like a one, and then two, five, one, and then add some more complicated stuff in it. But staying simple is really the key here. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.